There's something peculiar about these Chinese restaurant menus from the 1900s. This one's from Washington, this one's from Ohio, this one's from Florida. In each of these menus, you'll see egg foo yum. Out of thousands of Chinese dishes, how did this one fried omelet, a dish that isn't even that popular in mainland China, come to dominate the menus of Chinese American restaurants? Every dish has a story, so as my dad teaches us how to cook egg foo yum just like a Chinese chef, we're gonna go back in time to learn what it was like for my parents and other Chinese immigrants and how they used dishes like egg foo yum to win over America, a country that openly hated Chinese people at times. For context, if you've never had egg foo yum, it's essentially a fried omelet topped with a savory gravy packed with your choice of meat and veggies. Today's recipe calls for shrimp. In the US, shrimp are sold by the amount in a pound. Our shrimp today is 31.35, which means there are 31 to 35 shrimp in a pound, which is considered medium to large. If you prefer smaller shrimp, you would get those with bigger numbers. If you use smaller shrimp, you won't need to cut them in half. If you want to skip the peeling and deveining steps, you can buy already peeled and deveined shrimp from most grocery stores. Oh, also known as Fuyong Dan, egg Fuyong became this classic American comfort food. Cantonese immigrants brought it to America, but what drove people to leave China in the first place? Opportunity. My dad, like many other immigrants, came to America with a sense of optimism and newfound freedom. But their struggle was far from over. Uh, when I first arrived in the US, kind of a little scared. Yeah. Okay, how can I live in here? So for me, I say, oh, I should start learning English. I even don't, don't know how to go to a different place because I'm new. Yeah. I say, I need to learn. I need to learn English. I need to get a lot of opportunity to go on my life. But before Jennifer was born, I was similar. Wow. I still walk a little bit after Jennifer was born. Mm -hmm. One day, I, I saw him, I keep going, keep going. The needle go in, inside my finger. Ooh. Then I pulled it out and then said no more. And also don't make money, only make one dollar a day. Next, we'll prep the rest of our ingredients for the omelet. We'll chop the onion into thin slices. Then turn 90 degrees and cut those slices in half. For the green ends of the green onions, we'll cut into one to two inch segments. For the white ends, we'll dice them up for garnish. We'll crack four eggs into a bowl. Then we'll season them. We'll also add a quarter teaspoon of white pepper. For the sauce, we'll be using one tablespoon of oyster sauce, one tablespoon of light soy sauce, one teaspoon of dark soy sauce, one teaspoon of sugar, a quarter teaspoon of white pepper, four ounces of water, and two teaspoons of cornstarch. We have all of these ingredients listed on our blog at madewithlao.com, along with step-by-step -step instructions and video clips to guide you as you make the recipe at home. Now we'll make the slurry to add to the eggs later. For the next step, we'll need a pot and some hot water. We'll add about two cups of water here. 
Once the water boils, we'll add in our shrimp. After just 15 to 20 seconds, we'll take out the shrimp and set them aside. After just 10 seconds, we'll follow with the onion. After 30 to 40 seconds, we'll drain the bean sprouts and onion. For brief moments in time, America was eager for Chinese immigrants. What happened? Well, going all the way back to the gold rush in 1850, city leaders in San Francisco actually had a welcoming party for Chinese immigrants. America wanted partnership with Chinese immigrants. Word spread like wildfire through villages in the Guangdong province, and the Chinese flocked over by the thousands in search of the Gumsan or Gold Mountain. But America started pulling the rug out from under the Chinese. Whites became increasingly threatened by the Chinese, and the tension calcified in 1882 when the U.S. president signed what became known as the Chinese Exclusion Act, completely banning Chinese immigration. Now, there were still hundreds of thousands of Chinese immigrants in America, and what they had to endure was tragic. Between 1885 and 1887, in just two years, anti-Chinese groups harassed, massacred, and burned down over 200 Chinese communities all across the U.S. Obviously, throughout the 20th century, Chinese communities persevered in America, otherwise the Lao family wouldn't be here today in the Bay Area. But there was a lot that had to happen in order for Chinese communities to thrive in North America. And a big part of our cultural acceptance was through Chinese food and dishes like egg fu yang. With that, my dad will now share his expert tips to fry the perfect egg fu yang. Then we'll add the cornstarch slurry and continue beating it together. What is the best type of oil to use? Um, usually you can gently move the ingredients around so it's evenly spread out on top, but be careful not to move it too much as we want the bottom to fry into a beautiful layer of golden brown crust. Okay, any tips for frying without making it too oily? After about 40 to 50 seconds of pan frying on high, we'll turn the heat to low. Uh, any tips on making the egg softer and smoother? Yeah, it's very easy. 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 What about when he's mixing or preparing the egg? Is there anything special? You You as it continues cooking, we'll carefully rotate the eggs so that it cooks evenly and to make sure it doesn't stick. I also wanted to make a special shout out to thank all of our wonderful Patreon supporters for helping bring this video to life. If you enjoy our videos and are interested in supporting us directly, head on over to patreon.com slash madewithlao to learn more. After about a minute of pan frying on low, we're ready to flip the omelet. <laughs> So how did Egg Fu Young play into the immigrant story? Well, when I hear people talk about immigrants, I usually hear the phrase, they came with nothing. 
which isn't entirely true. Yes, they were poor, but they weren't coming to nothing. Did he already have a job lined up? Or how long did it take daddy to find a job? Like a painting the house, remodel the house. Immigrants flocked to these bustling Chinese communities where they could speak Chinese, reunite with friends and family, and find work. These communities also often had Chinese associations, which helped new immigrants figure out where to live in America. On the recommendation of these associations, many Chinese immigrants fanned out all across the US. In many places, there was no work, so Chinese immigrants had to forge their own opportunities, often in the form of restaurants. Chinese associations essentially had this whole playbook of how to cater to white people, from English-friendly names of restaurants like Dragon Palace, down to exactly what to offer on menus. This was critical because if you were the only Chinese family running a restaurant in a white town, you had to understand what your clientele would eat. Otherwise, you'd go out of business. Egg Fu Young was part of this Chinese playbook for white people food because it was basically an omelet that was both foreign and familiar. Americans ate omelets all the time, but Egg Fu Young has this addictive mixture of flavors that fall outside of the typical Western palate. And that's why dishes like Egg Fu Young help win the hearts of Americans, because food has this uncanny ability to bring people together. Obviously, it's not like Egg Fu Young erased racism. We still have a lot of work to do, but Chinese food is often people's first encounter with our culture, and it's a wonderful invitation to start to build empathy and a shared sense of humanity. I know a lot of you who watch Me With Lao are not Chinese and don't speak Cantonese, so it's not every day that you get to sit down with a 70-year-old chef who doesn't speak English and pick his brain. One of the broader goals of our channel is to help break down the barriers that we have, language or otherwise, and that our videos help spread compassion, love, and a sense that we have more in common than meets the eye. What is the best temperature to cook this at? No, but you know, it's a man for the, you know, man, man for the, the gin, the good, the dark herb, the good towel. You want to die again? How woo, man, for me, you, the heart, the long door, man, the pin, man, that's you, man, the gin, the towel, the gin, the gin, the gin, the gin, We'll check the bottom occasionally to see if it's approaching our desired color. We'll slide the omelet around the wok to make sure it's not sticking. After about three to four minutes of pan frying on low on this side, we'll flip it again. The goal is to have similar color on both sides. We'll let this side cook for a final 30 to 40 seconds. Okay, In a bit, my dad is going to show us how to make the famous gravy, but first, as a summary for pan frying, we'll first heat the wok till it's hot, then add oil. When the oil's hot, we'll add our egg mixture, making sure the heat is on high. After the first minute or so, when the crust is formed, we'll turn the heat back to low and pan fry for another minute. Make sure to slide it around to ensure it's not sticking and check the color of the bottom occasionally. We'll carefully flip the omelet and turn the heat back up to high to form the crust on this side. After the first minute, we'll turn it back to low and cook for another two to three minutes, also checking the bottom color and sliding it around. We'll quickly flip again to get the top side hot for just 30 to 40 seconds, then we'll plate. A lot of the timing of the cooking depends on your preferred consistency, cookware, and the oil you use. For example, if you don't like it with as much crust, lessen the time you cook it on high. If you like the egg more well done inside, you extend the time you cook it on low. Before we move on with the recipe, May is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And we wanted to highlight an amazing Asian-owned business. From Here to Sunday is an online store that curates craft goods from Asian American and BIPOC creators. Each product is made with love in limited quantities by talented artists, from cute plush dolls to jewelry to paintings to baked goods and more. The founder, Diana Ho, has a huge heart and is a talented artist in her own right. She actually designed the t-shirt I'm wearing now, which you can buy on their website along with many other goodies. We've linked their website in the description and you can get 10% off your order at From Here to Sunday with code MWL10. We'll pour the sauce we made earlier into the already hot wok. Then we'll turn the heat on to low and continuously mix the sauce. My dad adds about two ounces of water here because he thought the sauce was getting too thick. The consistency is up to your preference. We'll add a couple drops of sesame oil here. Was it popular in the 90s, 2000s? 
都唔係，芙蓉蛋唔係咁咩，唔係咁流行。因為嘅畢竟係芙蓉蛋，好普通嘅嗰啲嗰啲菜嚟啫嘛。芙蓉蛋煎好咗，希望大家中意。紅堆吃芙蓉眼咯。Cheers！ Thank you for the question， 阿生。多謝咩？多謝咩？哇！多謝。YouTube thinks you'll like this recipe next. Let's see if they're right. <laughs>